episode is brought to you by A3, a CMMC cloud-based collaborative environment for an organization seeking certification, otherwise known as an OSC, to build CMMC packages and share with a marketplace of consultant RPOs and assessor C3PAOs. Hey everybody, and welcome back to another episode of 123 CMMC. My name is Dana Mantilla. I am the, will be your host today. And one of our guests today is Ben Sane, and our other guest is Felix Odegi. They have a company called Cyberfort Advisors. Welcome, gentlemen. Would you like to say a little bit about yourselves and a little bit about your company? Certainly. Um, good morning, Dana. Thanks for having morning, us. Um, I'm Felix Odegi here. And um, Cyberfort Advisors is really a, a cybersecurity solutions company with a very a strong emphasis of you know helping middle mid to small businesses as well as individuals with how to really combat the ongoing uh, cyber trend if you will and sadly the prolification of cyber attacks has only gotten worse and more sophisticated and so we really help us uh, customers uh, you know, figure it out, yeah. uh, you know, as, as quickly as possible. We're still on top of the latest and greatest. And if you look at the whole life cycle of cyber threat, um, it's either you prevent it from happening, deal with it when it's happened, or figure out what to do now that it's happened. Mm -hmm. And so we try to really spend a lot of time helping you ensure it doesn't happen. Um, and then we also help you when it does happen. So. Uh, that's really Cyberfoot Advisors in a nutshell. All right. Well, that's good. And it's good that you're helping the smaller companies because they're the ones that need a lot of help and maybe don't know that they need a lot of help. So another thing that has helped us with all these cyber attacks is working from home. So today our topic is going to be cybersecurity and working from home and what kind of risks that are being posed because of this. So our first question is going to be, why is working from home any different from working from the office if it's the same company computer? It's a great question, and I'm going to let um, have Ben dig into this very deeply. But just to introduce it, uh, fair enough, when you're in the office, you've got the protection of the server infrastructure, the security that the company provides. As such, the company machine is inside the company firewall, is inside the company's policies, etc. Now, overnight, we just took that and went home. And at home, people might not even have passwords for their Wi-Fi. Yeah. And it's all kinds of stuff. Because why? Uh, junior needs to be on the iPad to do stuff. Um, so unfortunately, the home, being at home and uh, dealing with sensitive information or doing work at home is really like fish in a barrel for uh, cyber criminals. And um, you know, I'll just hand over to Ben to kind of give them more of a, you know, in depth on, on what that's all about. Yeah. So there's a bunch of different challenges that come from working from home and yes, it's a corporate laptop, but what we found with a lot of small companies when the pandemic struck, uh, is to prepare everybody to work from home. They did a lot of, a lot of things that were good in the short term, but really bad in the long term, like giving everyone administrative access to their own laptop, mm -hmm. um, and then letting them pick the password. So the keys to the kingdom are password one, two, three, which is, which is really bad mm -hmm. uh, to Felix's point about the home network being unsecured corporate network. You have the firewall, uh, you have the hardware firewalls, you have software firewalls. You probably have a software defined WAN, um, lots of, lots of security controls in place. And when you're at home, it's whatever happens to be on the laptop. So maybe there's endpoint protection. Maybe there's not, maybe it's just antivirus. Maybe, you know, hopefully it's more than that. Uh, but we found a lot of small businesses were really struck like, well, we have two choices. We can stop working and make no money, mm -hmm. or we could do these short-term things and let everybody go work from home. Um, and then working from home is also kind of changed over time where you have people who've decided that home isn't their mailing address where they get their checks mailed to anymore. It's maybe a Airbnb in another state. It may be the Starbucks down the street because their kids are driving them crazy and they can't get any work done. 
So now they're on public Wi-Fi at Starbucks or they're on some other random Wi-Fi network at an Airbnb. Uh, it just creates all these all these openings for any mildly sophisticated attacker to just sit and watch and sniff and, and listen in and record packets and decrypt and get everything. So it's yes, it's a corporate laptop, but in, if you if there aren't certain uh, things put in place, controls put in place, you might as well just be on a home computer. Mm -hmm. That's a very good point. All right, so the next one. So what are some common misconceptions that these remote workers have about cybersecurity? Do they just think that they're protected? Yeah, that they there's some army of cybersecurity engineers and analysts that didn't exist uh, before the pandemic at the company, but now they do. Um, they do. <laughs> it's just not how it works. So whatever you had before the pandemic is what you have during the pandemic. Not a lot of people boosted and uh, augmented their cybersecurity staff. Uh, in the beginning, as time went on, many, many, many companies saw the light. They're like, oh no, we need to, we need to augment this and, and grow this area. So, you know, we've been fortunate in having a lot of customers who've come to us saying, hey, uh, we need some consulting on this. Mm -hmm. um, Felix, do you, do you want to add on to that? No, that's exactly it. It's uh, spot on mm -hmm. um, in sense of um, it's unfortunately a false sense of secure security um, as well. It's also lack of awareness. They just don't know. Mm -hmm. They just assume, well, the company's taking care of it. Well, sadly, the cyber challenges we're facing with the ever more sophisticated criminals, it's just um, it's hard to measure now and put in a box. So sadly, I, I would probably put it in the area of just they don't know. Most people do not know what's going on in their machine, what's going on as far as like their cybersecurity posture. It's a uh, it's a tough thing to explain. Even those of us in the industry sometimes struggle to understand it. You know? So like you know, just the ordinary person is like, no, fix it. <laughs> yeah, and even before you know, before the pandemic. There were some people that really weren't paying much attention to cybersecurity. Maybe they did have a firewall, or you know, they had some some stuff in place. But as far as any kind of training with the non-technical people or a culture where everybody's kind of a little leery, may not have even existed. So we take those same people, and now we take them home, and like you said, they might not even have a password on their home Wi-Fi. So it's it, that mentality wasn't there before. It certainly didn't start. You know, now they're just working from home, even in more unsecure situations. So that's what I always keep telling people. We need to start helping the non-technical people understand some of the basics as opposed to just having just the technical aspect of, of things. So, so here's something, our next question. So what can remote workers do to protect the corporate identity regardless of what the company does or offers? So there's um, a number of things that you can do to protect your corporate identity. One, uh, don't share the password with your kids. Mm -hmm. It's your corporate laptop. It's your corporate iPad or whatever it is. Um, treat it that way. There was a study done. Um, I think it was two thirds of all managers freely shared the password to their devices with their family members uh, in a study that came out last year or the year before. So yeah, don't, don't share the password because the, how do you know they're not going to do it? You know, when you tell your nine-year-old, Mm -hmm. Here's the password to use, you know, mommy or daddy's computer. Mm -hmm. They're going to tell everybody. They're going to go on Xbox and tell everybody in Fortnite. Mm -hmm. um, and now your password is, is out in the world. Um, that's one big one. Another one is the Wi-Fi. So um, protect your own home Wi-Fi. To Felix's point, change the password from the default password to something unique. Um, if you do have to go out and work in a public network, like a Starbucks or someplace like that, rather than use the free Wi-Fi that comes from the, the place that you're sitting at, uh, tether to your phone. You, all of the phones now have 4G or 5G. It's plenty of bandwidth to do email and web surfing and knowledge management and, and information work. So it's you're much, much more secure to tether to your phone. So turn your phone activate the mobile hotspot on your phone and just use that. Um, again, you can set the password on that. So 
pick something that's not uh, not very easily cracked. <laughs> That's an excellent little tip you just gave there, because I think a lot of people, they probably know they're not secure in public Wi-Fi, but they don't know what to do. So that little tidbit of advice is perfect. If you're out somewhere, use your phone. If you're at the airport, if you're at an Airbnb, wherever wherever you are, if you're going through your phone, it's going to be much more secure than whatever Wi-Fi it is you think that you're hooking up. And it's an easy solution that we can all figure out. So that I'm really, really happy that you just... Uh, just pointed that out because that's what it is. They don't know. Like when you say change the password on your router, that's like people don't even understand what you're saying when you say that. So, you know, it, it, but you can figure it out if you go to Google or go to YouTube and you know what kind of, um, you know, who supplies your router and you type that in, how do I change the, the password? I'm sure something is going to come up that's going to be able to help you and it will help you walk through step by step. I mean, I think it can solve all the world's problems with Googling it or YouTubing it and somebody's come up with a solution. So that uh, that may help them with how to do that, how to even go about changing the password on the router. But I love the phone thing. That's great. Thank you. Steelroot, a national leader in helping companies in the defense industrial base with CMMC preparation and federal cybersecurity regulations. Big or small, Steelroot is here to help design, build, and manage IT. The Steelroot reference architecture is a secure, cloud-native operating environment built on zero-trust principles. Steelroot also provides managed cybersecurity, IT, and virtual ISSO services. Visit steelroot.us for more information. You're okay, welcome. so our next one. So what can digital nomads or freelancers do to protect themselves from a cyber attack? Felix, you want to take this one? Sure. Um, there are a host of things, right? But um, given the fact that you know the subject here is digital nomads, uh, I think there's some uh, work here from the business side. So the, their companies or whoever they work for, or even as a freelancer on your own, it doesn't hurt to invest in an inexpensive security awareness course, right? It's, um, it's like 24 bucks, you know, not per month, but for the whole year, right? Learn something. The, the, the concept here is you need to be a little bit more paranoid. That's just it, you know, don't just be so free really with the things you shouldn't click on, there are emails you should be able to identify right away like, wait a minute, my boss would never send this. Mm, that doesn't sound right. These are all the things that come up when you become aware. Mm -hmm. So a little bit of security awareness training goes a long way. It helps you have that extra additional gut check of what a regular email looks like. Or even if the email looks all so regular, there's something in there that doesn't make sense. And the moment you feel it doesn't make sense, assume it doesn't make sense, assume it's wrong, and then verify. So that's really the easiest thing that everyone, anyone can do. The idea here is not about being a, a, a hack being attempted on you. It's more about you making it really, really difficult. It's like being the poison fish. Yeah. At some point, you don't taste so good. It just make you really hard for the cyber attackers. Yeah, and they'll move on. They'll find somebody who is easier to attack. Um, one other thing I would add on to that is there are a number of top-notch, commercially available, commercially available uh, VPNs mm -hmm. that you can you can download. There, they all have the app for the desktop, app for the laptop, app for the phone, app for the tablet. So whatever kind of device you have, you buy it once. Whether it's Malwarebytes or NordVPN, those are two that we like. Um, you can protect your your device your your family's devices, um, your kids' devices, all can be protected. And then you teach the kids, okay, so first you click on the VPN icon. <laughs> you know, there, it, there's, there's a toggle from no to yes or off to on, you, you do that, and then go do what you're gonna do. It's a surf the web or play a game or, or chat with a friend or whatever it is you're gonna do. Um, make yourself a lot more secure. They don't really add much in terms of latency to whatever you're doing. So unless you're a professional esports gamer, um, you're not going to really notice any 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 measurable degradation. Well, that's good because if, if they if people did notice anything like that, then they wouldn't use it. <laughs> yeah. This is interrupting me. This is too slow. Oh, well, this was really, really good. So do we have any tips or tricks or anything for people to help protect themselves online before we go? 
Uh, I have another one. Okay. Uh, the mobile hotspot was one. Yes, <laughs> the was other one uh, that a lot of people don't take advantage of uh, is it's one of the unfortunate outcomes for a lot of people when they've been the victim of a hack is uh, things popping up in their credit report that they didn't know they didn't sign up for. I never got the, I never opened that credit card. I never applied for that bank loan. I, that's not my car on and on and on and on. Mm -hmm. There's a free service that's offered by uh, the credit bureaus. Uh, it's super easy to take advantage of. It's freezing your credit. Mm -hmm. So what you do is when you're not looking to buy a house or buy a car or refinance or get a credit card um, or apply for a loan, freeze your credit. And then when you do anticipate that you're going to refinance or whatever, then you unfreeze it and it gives it about 30 days to, to unfreeze. But while it's frozen, 0% all requests are accepted. So your credit score remains uh, top notch. There's no mystery about where did this come from? Where did that come from? It's a really smart way to keep things kind of locked down when you're not using them. And lastly, of course, the very common one that people tend to forget all the time, change your passwords. Mm -hmm. As inconvenience and, and, and maybe sometimes just you know, problematic as it is, at a minimum, every three months, every month is fine. Just change it. Mm -hmm. it. It just makes it harder, and it keeps you on your toes. Change your password regularly. That's very important. Yeah, and on top of that, there's password managers now, like LastPass and One Password. Super easy to use. Uh, con again, consum consumer grade. Not to, not anything particularly difficult to manage. Uh, they'll help you generate super complex passwords. And you don't have to memorize any of them. You just have to memorize just the one to get in. Yeah, that's that's a very good advice because that's the biggest thing people get hung up on is I don't want to change my password because then I'm going to have to remember and it's you know the end of the world. So anyway, well, gentlemen, thank you very, very much for your time. This was great. I think we got a lot of awesome information in here. Very helpful, especially these days with everybody working from home. So I want to say thank you to that. And I want to say thank you to everybody who watched and hopefully you'll tune into the next episode. So have a good day. Thank Bye -bye. you, Dana. Thanks for having us. Bye -bye. Cheers. This episode is brought to you by A3, a CMMC cloud-based collaborative environment for an organization seeking certification, otherwise known as an OSC, to build CMMC packages and share with a marketplace of consultant RPOs and assessor C3PAOs. Thank you.